Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 342. Suffering is the greatest treasure on earth. It purifies the soul. In suffering we learn who is our true friend. True love is measured by the thermometer of suffering. Jesus, I thank you for the little daily crosses, for opposition to my endeavors, for the hardships of communal life, for the misinterpretation of my intentions for humiliations at the hands of others, for the harsh way in which we are treated, for false suspicions, for poor health and loss of strength, for self-denial, for dying to myself, for lack of recognition in everything, for the upsetting of all my plans. Thank you, Jesus, for interior sufferings, for dryness of spirit, for terrors, fears, and incertitudes, for the darkness and the deep interior night, for temptations and various ordeals, for torments too difficult to describe, especially for those which no one will understand, for the hour of death with its fierce struggle and all its bitterness. I thank you, Jesus, you who first drank the cup of bitterness before you gave it to me, in a much milder form. I put my lips to this cup of your holy will. Let all be done according to your good pleasure. Let that which your wisdom ordained before the ages be done to me. I want to drink the cup to its last drop, and not seek to know the reason why. In bitterness is my joy, in hopelessness is my trust, in you, O Lord, all is good, all is a gift of your paternal heart. I do not prefer consolations over bitterness or bitterness over consolations, but thank you, O Jesus, for everything. It is my delight to fix my gaze upon you, O incomprehensible God. My spirit abides in these mysterious dwelling places, and there I am at home. I know very well the dwelling place of my spouse. I feel there is not a single drop of blood in me that does not burn with love for you. O uncreated beauty, whoever comes to know you once cannot love anything else. I can feel the bottomless abyss of my soul, and nothing will fill it but God himself. I feel that I am drowned in him like a single grain of sand in a bottomless ocean. December 20th, 1934 One evening, as I entered my cell, I saw the Lord Jesus exposed in the monstrance, under the open sky, as it seemed. At the feet of Jesus I saw my confessor, and behind him a great number of the highest-ranking ecclesiastics, clothed in vestments the like of which I had never seen except in this vision, and behind them groups of religious from various orders, and further still I saw enormous crowds of people which extended far beyond my vision. I saw the two rays coming out from the host, as in the image, closely united but not intermingled, and they passed through the hands of my confessor and then through the hands of the clergy, and from their hands to the people. And then they returned to the host. And at that moment I saw myself once again in the cell which I had just entered. December twenty-second, 1934 When it was possible for me to go to confession during the week, I happened to get there when my confessor was saying Holy Mass. During the third part of the Mass I saw the infant Jesus, a little smaller than usual, and with this difference, that he was wearing a violet tunic. He usually has a white one. In this section, 
St. Faustina tries to help us to understand the mystery of suffering. It is tied to love. When one is deeply in love, the suffering becomes bearable, even desirable, as a way of demonstrating one's love. What counts is the love, and the suffering is something one is able to get through for the sake of the beloved. In this case, Jesus is the beloved of St. Faustina, and she has a beautiful bond with him. Here also, St. Faustina speaks of a vision of the exposed Eucharist in the monstrance. The rays of mercy were coming from the host just as they do from the image of the divine mercy. And they passed through the hands of her confessor and other clergy, and then they came back to the host. Uh, Of course, they reached the people before coming back to the host. So Jesus uses his clergy as his representatives. They become instruments of his mercy. It reminds me of a prophecy from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter uh, 55, numbers 10 and 11, in which the prophet speaks about the effectiveness of the word of God. It's actually God's words. He says, For just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to him who sows and bread to him who eats, so shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The graces and the mercy which Jesus pours out on the earth will have their effect. And Jesus also wants to use each one of us as instruments of his mercy. Thank you.